welcome back to Woodworks. Over the past couple of weeks we've done a couple of various cross halving joints and um, today we're going to move on slightly, we're going to use similar techniques but we're going to do a mortise and tenon joint. Again like I said previously don't worry too much about getting the joint perfect, just learn the process of putting it together and it'll all just take time and practice then for you to get a perfect tight joint. So a joint we used previously, I'm now going to take that apart, we've got the timber there, so we're going to use that, and we'll just keep using this as our test piece. So we're going to use that, it's already pre-squared, and we'll use that to cut our mortise and tenon into those. I've got a mortise and tenon here which I've cut previously. Um, it is a through mortise and tenon, as you can see that goes right the way through that mortise, and then the tenon, it hasn't got any shoulders, it's a full width. That is a full mortise and tenon that passes right the way through. What we're going to do today is a half mortise and tenon which is leaves you literally with only half of the tenon into the main part of the mortise. Again we're going to today be cutting it with a shoulder on because if I can push that in there I'll show you. You can, I've cut this one as a demonstration piece and it's over a overcut so you can see. There is like a little gap in the side of it. If you've got any mismatch, whether you've got a cut or a little tear in the top of the mortise, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a shoulder to hide that. If you've just cut it dead straight, it will show those sort of imperfections on the edge. So we're going to today cut it as a mortise and tenon that's blind and it will have shoulders on it to hide that sort of mismatch on the edges. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the area in which we're going to um, cut our mortise because we'll be cutting the mortise first. So we're going to use this piece of the mortise and it's going to be into this section. So I've already just very quickly just put our line across for our, our point of start which is there and again like I said previously use your timber to put a little mark on that side and then again square it over so that your lines are dead square in there. We're going to put the piece that we're going to put the tenon on, we're going to take that away for the time being, so we're going to eliminate that and we're going to concentrate on cutting the mortise first. Now what we use is, as you've probably seen, there's a normal marking gauge which you can use it has only got one pin in it or you can use what's called a mortise gauge which is one of those now what this actually does when that's loose it has two pins on one side and one pin on the other some mortise gauges will only have the two pins but it's a sliding I don't know if you can see it on the camera it is actually a sliding pin and that will set the distance for your mortise so what we're going to do, we're going to measure the width of the timber and that is 40 millimetre, sorry 39 millimetre. So what we're going to actually do is divide that into three and then we're going to set the mortise gauge to one third from the shoulder there to that point, the second third there and then the remainder will be for the other side uh, so we're going to set the mortise gauge up so I'll just do that very quickly and we'll then mark it on for the points of our mortise okay so we've selected our area where we're going to be cutting our mortise as I've said to you previously really important face side face edge and we're going to carry those lines around so that's a face side face edge we're going to utilize that, those to bring those lines round just very lightly so very light markings and we carry that round to the other side and I'm just going to show you this Although we're not going right the way through, I'm just going to show you this, this is how you carry the lines through to do a fall through mortise.
Okay, so you then have those three sets of lines. We would then need to mark on there, and because we're only going in on a half mortise, we're only going to mark the one side. So again, face side with our gauge already preset. We're going to mark that between the lines. Now, if we was going to be doing a full mortise and tenon right the way through, we would turn it over again from the face side, mark the back side of it as well. As we're only doing one side, we're going to remain with doing the front. So I'm just going to very quickly just pop a line down there so you can see the markings through there. So that now gives us a slot that we'll be cutting for the mortise. But as I said to you, because we want to bring in slightly from the edge just to hide any imperfections, we're going to drop in about five millimeter either side, four or five millimeter, equally on both sides. So let's do that now. We're going to measure back five millimeter from either end. And then again, we're going to square our lines across. Okay, so we're now going to cut our multis to these lines not to the actual width of the timber. So we ignore the two outlines and we use the two inners and a third of the width of the timber. So this is 13mm, 13mm, 13mm. That will give us an equal strength mortise all the way across. Okay, so we're using a chisel which is equal distance or as near as without going into the side walls. So we want to try and get the chisel as near as, um, preferably firmer chisel with the straight sides. Um, if not, a bevel chisel is just as good. Just make sure it doesn't cut into the sides of your wall all the way around. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that in with the back of the chisel against your line, keeping it nice and upright. And we're just going to give that a slight tap with a mallet, just hit it with a wooden mallet just to make that first cut. And we're going to do exactly the same on this end. Couple of firm cuts. Then we can use a wider chisel to do exactly the same thing again just inside that line. You don't want to be pairing that line, so you want to come just inside it, give it a tap, move it along. Give it a tap and do the same on the other side. That will then give you your first lines to be cut into. That will separate the fibres so that it's not going to split out too far out on the side. You give that a little tap. And then taking the, the actual multis out, you only need to use the chisel just very lightly. You shouldn't. If you've got a nice sharp chisel, you shouldn't need to be going too mad, hammering and tapping it. You should be able to take a little bit at a time. Take your time doing it, and you'll get a nice mortise. If you try and rush it, start slogging away at it, you'll kill your mortise. Which will in turn then leave you with a very loose joint. So just nice, small pairings out. Take your time to get that first cut in there. You just need that recess in there to start with, and then we can cut into it properly. And just very gently just working into it, taking that channel out. Now we can start, now we've got that first section out, that top layer out, we can just very gently just chop through it. Making sure we don't touch the sides. Do that 
all the way along and then again we can just flick those out just be very gentle when you come up to the ends of it that you don't push too hard and cut into the wall that you want to keep Wiggle it through there and go back and do it again. Keeping the chisel upright as you can, especially on the ends. Turn it round so it's square against the back. And again, very gently, just plough those out. A little wiggle with a chisel. Now we've got down where it's supporting the two sides of the blade. I don't know if you can see it. The side is supporting the two sides of the blade it's in there we can then start just, just gently chipping away either side just making sure that our ends stay square give that a good cut down and as long as that chisel stays absolutely vertical you shouldn't have a problem Tap, which you can do with a wider chisel actually. You can now start dropping down the layers. just about being very careful when you start to cut them all is that you don't damage the top too much because you don't want to lose your nice crisp lines at the top once you get down a bit further you can start going a little bit deeper with the chisel on every cut I've cut down into the mortise now, so we've got a sort of a fair bit of depth in there. What we're aiming to do now is to bottom that out at the depth we need. So we've just set a supposed depth that we'd need, and we drop that in, and we see that we are just slightly above it. So we're going to take the bottom out, and all we're going to do, just very carefully, is you must not lever on these sides because if you're going to lever on those sides. I'll drop that in there. If you're going to leave it on those sides like that, you're going to do all damage along the back of the mortise. So you want to try and avoid levering that. So come away from that and then just very carefully just work on it from the sides like that. But to, because that chisel is tight in there, where you've been cutting down both sides, what I would say is to take a wider chisel and just very carefully keeping the chisel absolutely upright just shave down any rough edges that are on that side wall just a couple of shavings is all it will take right into the corners we do that on both sides keeping it nice and tight on there that will, that will straighten that wall up, take off any loose fibres that are hanging off the side of it. And say that. 
nice little shaving down there is all it's going to take. Put right into the corners, get a little scrape across. And then even with a smaller chisel just flick out your waste or knock your waste out of it. That will allow your chisel that you cut the mortise with in there to be able to scrape along the bottom knock any little odd lumps out of it and then we can pair that by hand to get a nice flat bottom in that mortise and we work that from both sides and with a nice sharp chisel it should come out quite easily Just make sure you get right into your corners, take any waste out in the bottom corners. Perhaps a little paring down the side. Pull that away. Get that bottom nice and flat. So we'll take that out, we'll give that a little tack off. Any waste out of there. And then we'll check our depth. So now you can see we're going to measure the depth of a mortise and I've preset a depth on here and as we come into that now, now the bottom has been scraped and cleaned that sits in that's perfect depth so that gives us a guide now for the depth of the mortise uh, of the tenon sorry. So to set up our tenon we're going to put our tenon on the end of this piece of timber. What we're going to do is we're going to align it so that we can get the widths of the actual tenon. So our guidelines that we had initially, which were the width of the timber. So we've got our, our two lines that we had there. We're going to bring that perfectly in line with that by using our square on our line. And then we're going to push that timber up to it and we're going to hold that in place to make sure it doesn't move. Now we need to then scribe these lines across to there. So we can do that just by putting a line across with a square. And the end of a steel rule is good enough. Find the end of your, your tenon, where your tenon is going to be. We put a line across there and up onto where the tenon is going to go and we can do exactly the same again using the face of the piece of timber that we're putting the tenon in to keep it nice and square mark across and up so as you can see that's a mark for the shoulder on either side and that is taken from the edges of the mortise and we're now going to do the same for the width of the mortise. Now you can use your marking gauge but you're more accurate if you do happen to slide slightly off with cutting it's more accurate to actually cut, take the cut for your tenon off of your actual mortise. So I'll show you how to do that. So we're using the ruler to line the sides up so we're all nice and square across there and then we're just going to take off the inside lines and mark for the width of the actual tenon. Now we can reference check these using the marking gauge and as you can see that's absolutely spot on so that then says okay we can use the marking gauge to mark out for our tenon. So again off the face side the same as we've done on that one. We we'll just put a little line down there just as a reference line. Across the end and back up the other side. So we've got guidelines there. So the depth of the mortise that we had which we took from there 
we're going to use that to mark our depth. I don't know if you can see that. We're going to mark our depth on there. Okay, and then using our square, we are going to mark all the way round. as per normal and we want to go all the way around because you've got to bear in mind that we're actually taking a shoulder as well as the cheeks off of the tenon so we're going to use a normal marking gauge with the single pin to mark out for the shoulders on the side. So we're just going to score those round. other side that gives us our lines which will then show us where on the end there Our tenon is going to be within that area, so everything around there is waste. So now we're going to start cutting these lines down to form the tenon. But before we do that, as we usually do, we're going to mark all the way around the outside. We're going to put our knife wall in, and that will give us our guideline. So this is where we're cutting our knife wall. Again, sticking to face side face edge, picking up our line from our previous cut, making that nice and deep. chisel again just knocking that little edge out and just nice and gently take that out We need to do that on all four sides because we're going to be cutting all the way round to form our tenon and that will give us a nice clean edge when the tenon sits into the mortise. It'll be nice and sharp and crisp. Nice and gently with a chisel. any loose fragments and then what we're going to do is we're going to set it up on the bench hook and we're going to make our cuts on all four sides to form 
the base of the tenon. So we're now going to put our shoulder cuts in and we've marked from the sides of our tenon we just highlighted them with a pencil just to get a positive line there that we can see but we're going to just cut all the way around now into our knife wall and just down to our line so when we're cutting down to the tenon we cut down to that point when we're cutting these little shoulders just very small amounts on the top so I'll cut them first Just drop our saw in, very lightly take our cuts. So what we're doing here is now going to remove these shoulders. And we're just going to use the technique we used before. At diagonals, just following and guiding those lines. We're just going to bring that down to our line, just right on our line. Actually, we can cut both of those while we're there, we'll do both of those. Turn that round. And we'll run the other side the same. Staying on the waist side of our line again. And spin that round using our two reference points on the top there straight down remove those shoulders Okay, so now we've formed our tenon, we've got to make the tenon fit to the mortise. So what we're going to use is a chisel, we're just going to set that down, just very lightly with a chisel, we're just going to clean back any rough on the top of that tenon there. Do the same on this side, so any little sharp lines and that's a starting point just give it a little trim back once you've got it there 
take this take the rough off of it we're then knowing that we've got a face side to the front we keep the face side on this piece to the front we align it and it's slightly wider than our mortise hole which is good so that gives us plenty of meat on there to be able to take it back and again on the sides those little shoulders should go nicely so we just need to trim those just a fraction so again try keeping your hand away from the chisel it should ideally be behind it so then we just give that a little trim a little shave across there before same sort of thing on that side just take off any rough and then we can see the actual width of that is near on correct so just a little tiny shaving on that side. It's a little bit high. That would then work for the width. So we then need just to start working on the faces of the tenner. So we'll remove that and we'll put that in the vise. And again, if you use a chisel that down level with a vice then you've got it near there just bring it just up a fraction just a slight fraction just a little wiggle then you've got your vice that you can use to support the back of your chisel while you're just taking that shaving off of it just very gently You only want to go a fraction at a time. If you try taking too much off, you're going to wind up making the joint too loose. And just a little wiggle again, bring it up. Use the heel of the vice here as a guide to start the chisel. And bring it up so it's flat. a small amount often before we do any any more we'll try it but what we need to remember is whatever we take off one side of the tenon take off the other so that it doesn't make the joint one-sided pushing away and becoming out of line on the two faces even cut off of there and again we'll try it see how close we're getting and that is going in quite nice just a little bit more trimming that's just a little bit on that side there which we can do as such there and it always pays when you're cutting a tenon just to just very easy very gently just ease that front corner off and 
and that just allow it to slip in to the mortise itself without too much of a problem. And anything in the bottom corners, again, it'll help with clearing the corners if they're not 100% sharp. in there we'll see a bit in the corner that and then that should fit rather nicely like so there you go we'll push down just needs a little trim on the bottom. Tap out. And we'll clear out the bottom of the mortise in the corners. And then that should fit together quite nicely. Well, we've achieved our mortise and tenon today. Um, I'm just going to show you a couple of little things on there that we were speaking about before and that is where the shoulder sits above the opening for the mortise. Well this is our shoulder that we cut on the end of the tenons which now will overhang the mortise there and that will hide any imperfections there, it will give a nice clean line right the way across. And as you can see we've got the two sides which are equal distance to the tenon so that will give it equal strength right the way across that bit of timber so we're just going to give that a little push down and we've got a nice clean line across there now with no breaking where the tenon sits into the mortise it's nice clean and even Nice and flush and level on both sides. And that is our mortise and tenon. So I hope you enjoyed doing the mortise and tenon. Just keep practicing, you will get it. Um, like I say, you're never going to get it perfect first time, it's going to take a few attempts, um, as with any other joint that you're going to be cutting. So just keep practicing. Um, we'll move on next week probably to cutting something like a rebate. Um, just something slightly different but in the meantime if you've enjoyed what you've seen and you'd like to see some more like subscribe click the little bell and that will give you notifications and we'll speak to you again soon thanks for joining us